And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest chit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a returning good brother to the temple, a, a, man, for, a, a man previously known for... Warpland eh, and Neurosity, now making his venture into the wonderfully weird world of card gaming, with a with a card game about monks. So of course you know I had, I had to get in on this, known as Aset, not to be confused with eating your spaghetti. The one and only <laughs> Gavio Kiryoga. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing fine. Thank you, Mildra, for inviting me again to your wonderful temple. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> Yeah, I had I had to get one I had to get one I had to get one um, bad joke out of my system when it came to the whole spaghetti thing. Um, <laughs> no, that's okay. The name is uh, liable for jokes. Mm -hmm. It's a very weird name. Yeah. Um. So, a set, as I understand it, is a game about monks ser searching for in searching for enlightenment. Um. Correct. So, I, so yes. I suppose the first thing I should ask is, what about what about monks um, drew you in? What about monks drew me in? Mm -hmm. Well, I have I have always been uh, fascinated by specifically uh, the life of Saint Anthony, who was a, an ascetic monk, and a recurring theme uh, uh, from a medieval painting. And that eventually evolved also in modern painting with Dali and well, other artists. Uh, so I think it's uh, about uh, a spiritual struggle, uh, about, uh, as you said, a search for enlightenment, uh, while being uh, beset by the temptations, temptations from uh, demons in this case. I think it's a recurring theme from humanity. I mean, in the sense of we are all always trying to struggle to make a sense of everything and trying to uh, be a better person or strive for what we think it's our um, awakening <laughs> or our improving our, of ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have to say that the, the name derives from uh, the word ascetism, and I think it was funny that it sounded also like asset, you know, the, um, like, a, like a property, like an asset from, you know, the economics, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and with now... When it comes to that, when it comes to this particular card game, was this was was this was this something that you had been kicking around for a while, or did or were its origins a bit more recent? It has been sitting on my drawer uh, for three years, more or less. Uh, I have a very good friend of mine that's a graphic designer, and he wanted to do a project with me, and I told him that I had this this game that was uh, waiting for, for the opportunity to, to come to light. And we designed it together uh, during the dreadful uh, 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. So it has a very specific minimal aesthetics, which we found that it would be suitable. Um, and now uh, it's a very like minimal, very contemplative game mm -hmm. yeah I can, which I can I can definitely I can definitely see now given the fact that it given the fact that it is a, it now first off um, as I as I understand it um, with, when it comes to when it comes to the when it comes to the mechanics you have a you have the you have the set of cards, and you also have a D eight and D ten dice. Um, were there, that is correct. Were there early were there early attempts on to do to do the game completely diceless, or what, or um, or was that not the case? 
there was some uh, there was an early attempt to do it diceless but we found we even made a diceless version at, at the beginning but we found that uh, the dice uh, added that, that randomness that made it like uh, a bit more exciting so we decided for the to keep the dice would you like me to go over a bit about the mechanics? Or yeah, let, before understand? before we before we go, before we go um for, before we go further into a lot of the stuff, I think we need I think we need to establish the core mechanics mm -hmm. of of how the search for enlightenment works in a set. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, as we explained, uh, players take turns to interpret an ascetic monk struggling to reach enlightenment uh, in the desert while the rest of the players take the roles of uh, deceiving demons that will present temptations uh, to deviate them from the path. Mm -hmm. And each temptation per pertains, is corresponding to one of four specific virtues. Uh, the virtues are uh, compassion, uh, humility, faith, and temperance. Uh, sh sh should I go uh, explaining the system? Yes. Um... Okay. Well, uh, it's quite straightforward. Uh, the player interpreting the monk uh, will see uh, each temptation that is being offered by each demon, and he will choose one, uh, considering that uh, what is his strongest virtue. Uh, and all and all the virtues are, are hidden from the demons, so they don't know what is his strongest virtue. And then he will uh, roll a d8 or a d10, depending if it is a minor or major temptation. If he rolls below, if he rolls below uh, the virtue stat number, then he has resisted that temptation and advances one step in the ladder towards enlightenment. Mm -hmm. If he rolls above his virtue stat number then he has succumbed to that temptation and he was not virtuous enough and so he will not advance. If a monk reaches five steps in the ladder, he has achieved enlightenment and he has won the game. Mm -hmm. So the game sets up uh, players or the demons specifically for a lot of scheming and diplomacy uh, as they all start to elaborate all sorts of theories about what they consider that that particular monk is uh, his weakest virtue. Um, so um, uh, each time he, each time the monk rolls the dice, that sets an indicator as to what might be the number for that virtue. It's like all like theoretical, because nobody knows exactly what is the virtue. Only the monk knows it. Mm -hmm. What's the number? So pretty soon the game becomes like uh, an ordeal, uh, a, a, a mnemonical ordeal where you have to remember what were your, your theory about that specific monk, and they all start to discuss and, and, and take into account what temptations they have in their hand, because they start off with only three for each demon, and they start like piling them up if, if they, they, they won they presented the, the temptation they presented or not. And it's quite... Um, um, very political, very, a lot of diplomacy involved in the game. I get, I get. Uh, Go ahead. There are, also, there are also a few extra cards with unique abilities. You have Treason uh, for a demon cards, which are used to cancel the temptation from another demon. Mm -hmm. um, on other individual cards, like, you know, uh, there is a, like, a darkness card, which makes that all the temptations are... Uh, played uh, upside down, so the monk ha has to choose one without knowing what is it. Uh, there are several like that. Um, there is a hunting apparition which makes that the, if the monk fails to resist the temptation, he will move back one step uh, from the staircase towards elimination and uh, so forth. So there, like, there is a lost in the desert card which make, makes the monk lose his turn. Uh, several like uh, situations that are different. And what's also quite nice and that has worked very well in the playtesting 
is that each temptation has an individual story situation. Um, so it's very nice when the monk has to read out loud or maybe a demon read, reads it for him in a funny voice. Mm -hmm. uh, like, you know, for example, for the minor, minor temptation of temperance, uh, a proud king offers you to live in his palace away from the hardships of the desert. And that's a temptation uh, for that monk, no? You can imagine. Or, or for humility, you are invited to a gathering with the wisest men of the civilized world. So it's all very evocative to that particular era, but it may have some relevant significance under the current modern eye, maybe, for some. Mm -hmm. Now, when it, now you meant, now, One of the one of the questions one of the questions that I have is um what what is the dividing line between minor and major temptations? A minor you will use a d8 and major you will use a d10. Mm -hmm. It's it's easier. Uh, minor temptations are easier to resist. And um, when you're ro when you're rolling those when you're rolling those die, what's the what's the I guess what's the magic number that's going that's going to determine whether you succeed or fail? Each monk will have a very minimal character sheet mm -hmm. where he will uh, make up uh, the the virtues uh, like uh, if there were stats for a regular character sheet in a role playing game. Mm -hmm. You will have twenty points to divide uh, between the four virtues. And so you can maybe maybe you will have this monk particular monk will have only one in humility, but he will have a, a nine in faith. But the demons don't know that, so they need to try to find out uh, what are his uh, weaknesses. Mm -hmm. You you find out as you play the game, and once they find out that his weakest spot is like humility, for example, uh, all of them always try to present the temptation of. Uh, humility for them mm -hmm. but not it, it is not always the case that all of them have that temptation so they need to try to work together as a scenario that uh, makes makes him fall no yeah. makes the monk fall mm -hmm. and the and the The, when you meant when you mentioned the demons in that regard, it it, fe it feels like there's it feels like there's the way you said it, it feels like there's one person who's going to be playing at, who's going to be playing as the opposition in that front. Is that is that the case, or is or are um are the temptations that are doled out on a on a shared part of the table? Um, when, when each turn, uh, there there will be only one asset one monk mm -hmm. and all the rest of the players will be demons who will take a, who who will place temptations mm -hmm. so so if you are playing like in a group of four there will be one monk and three demons and mm -hmm. those three demons will discuss okay i think i think he has a very low faith i will present a faith let's all of us try to present faith okay i don't i don't have faith but i will present a major humility and that's basically the mechanic. So all the demons work together. They have to discuss. And they, I told you not to present a humility. I will now present a treason for a demon card, and I will cancel your humility, for example. That, that can happen. Or maybe I will present darkness so he don't know which one is humility. Mm -hmm. and, with, and with that... With that kind, with that kind of thing in with that kind of thing in mind, um, would it be fair of me mm -hmm. to say that unlike unlike a typical character sheet, when when people are writing down what their what values they have when it comes to virtues, um, mm -hmm. no, um, the other players aren't allowed to see that. Nobody is allowed to see your character fish, uh, sheet. It will be kept face down, mm -hmm. and the values go from one to ten in yeah. the in the virtues. And I'm getting. And because of the, because of the way the values work, I'm guessing that the, that the die setup is a roll under approach. 
Yes, I'm a big fan of roll under approach, as you may know. <laughs> oh, I know old old habits and old habits die hard, as they say. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, within the within the within the within the setup of each of of each um, of each card, is it one? Is it one side has the temptation and the other side has the um, deceit. Sorry, can you uh, ask the question again, um, uh, Mindra? It, when it comes to when it comes to the use of the cards, is it an instance of of each of one card one side of the card has the as the description of the temptation and the other card has the deceit, i.e., the effect? Um, no, 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 no. The card it just shows uh, what is the temptation and the story within the card. All right. Um, the the character sheet is totally separate from that, of course. Mm -hmm. Um. And when it and when it comes to when. It, that brings that brings me to deceits, which seems to which seems to be a way of um, throwing a throwing a monkey wrench into into the flow. Yes, ah, yes, deceits are uh, are individual cards, like unique. There is only one each uh, in the deck. Mm -hmm. uh, there are five five of them. It's a seventy two card deck uh, with two cards being just uh, examples of things. Um, so yeah, they are. Uh, they make uh, very special effects. Each one of them is a special effect. All right, i i can I can get behind I can get behind that. Um, now the exa the example shown on the Kickstarter page is is lost in the desert. I.e., you mm -hmm. lose your lose your t lose your turn, and all t and all temptations shown are dis are discarded. Um, yes. So he gains a revelation. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to when it comes to deceits, are those all, are those also used by by the de by the um, demons, demons in this case? Yes, he needs to choose. He can either present a temptation or a deceit. He cannot present both. And, and I need to. I, I forgot to clarify that um, a revelation uh, means that you can increase. Uh, the monk uh, can increase any of his virtues by one, and you get a revelation every time you roll a nine. Every time a monk rolls a nine, he gets a revelation, and he can increase a virtue by one. Now, with now with that in with that in mind, um, when it what would ha what would happen in what would happen in that in that re in that regard if if some if a temptation is presented and the monk ends up beating it? If he, if the monk beats the temptation, he ascends one step in the ladder towards enlightenment. Mm -hmm. He ma if he makes it five steps, he wins. And when it com and when it comes to that when it comes to that step is there is is there is there is there a way to is there is there a way for someone to go back on the on that on the step? Yes, there is a deceit that makes you go backwards and let me let me look what's the name of it because I don't remember it. Yes, haunting apparition. If the asset fails to resist, resist his temptation, he will move back one step in the ladder towards enlightenment. So, yes, there is a way to go back. Yeah, now, and the and because of that... Um, is has there have there ever, in playtesting the game have there been instances where there's been a bit of a loop of people going up and down or is or is it a case where momentum gen, generally um generally ha generally happens? 
it, it can happen, but not for very long. Uh, it can very well happen that it seems like uh, one person is going to win and then all the demons just find out what's his weak spot and he never ascends one step. Uh, so it's very... Uh, it, it, the, the, the power balance changes a lot in the game, luckily. And the, the, a whole session lasts, I think, no, not more than 25 minutes. Something like that. Yeah. And with the, because the, because one of the, th one of the things that is in the back of my mind about this kind, about this kind of game is, is making it so that once somebody has a bit of momentum, it's not, a, it mm -hmm. doesn't end up being a foregone conclusion that they're going to end up winning. Uh, so, so, uh, what, what, what's, what, 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 what's your meaning regarding that? Um, you mean that uh, it's get difficult for the one that starts to win? That when that when somebody's get it's it's more of it's more of a it's more of a um is, it's more of an issue of just be, of making it so that just because you're up, just because you're a, a step or two ahead doesn't mm -hmm. doesn't mean that doesn't mean that other people can't come back. No, of course, of course, uh, everyone has a, still a chance to win. Mm -hmm. it, it, it doesn't happen that if you are very late behind, you don't get a chance. Uh, you still have a very good chance. Mm -hmm. uh, but because maybe you are not like uh, making progress as a monk, but like, as a demon, you have like your hand full of, tem full of temptations. Mm -hmm. So you have like a lot of options to manipulate the game in your advantage. Uh, so that, that's uh, one of the things that's very interesting that it's like you, you are like two characters at the same time of two sides of, of the same coin. For one side you are like a monk seeking enlightenment and the other side you're like a demon trying to prevent enlightenment from others. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can make progress in both ways. And because and that that is that is an important thing because because I've seen because I have I have seen in, I have seen instances of of ta of taking of take of taking a of taking a lead and it, and pretty much ends up snowballing and there's no way to do any sort of reversal. Uh huh. In, in yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I like yeah, I understand. It lets you down. Some players can feel let down if they feel that there is no way they can win. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, that has to do with game mechanics. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now, as I understand, now as I understand it, this is a the this is a seven this is a seventy two card um, deck. Yes. Now, how, yes, that how, it really depends if we are we are still debating if we are going to include the rule book as two cards because it's a very simple minimal rule book, or we are going to I don't know try to set up a free PDF for download. I don't know. We are going. We are still trying to resolve that particular issue. What is, what is the best approach for that? I gotcha. Um, uh, how how many of those how many of those cards would be temptations and how many of those cards would be deceits? Uh, there, I th it's uh, sixty. I think it's sixty deceits. Uh, five no sixty temptations. Uh, five deceits. And four or uh, yeah four uh, treasons for a demons. And the rest is like a character sheet example and rules and some other blurb. Mm -hmm. Now, tre I'd like to talk a bit about treasons. What, exa what exactly does treason for a demon entail? Yeah, the treason for a demon entails uh, exactly that, that, the, that one demon uh, cancels another demon's temptation. Because maybe he believes uh, that temptation is not good enough uh, to make the monk uh, fall, maybe. Maybe the, the demon doesn't have a... Maybe the demon has a very bad hand and all his temptations are minor, 
and he will present a very bad minor temptation and the other demon will say, no, no, this is not good. He will cancel it. Mm -hmm. And now the monk has less options to choose. And also, also remember that uh, if the monk fails to resist uh, a temptation, the demon that presented that temptation will get two or, or two cards uh, mm -hmm. to replace that temptation. So his hand starts growing bigger and he becomes like a more powerful demon. Now, when it comes when it comes to that when it comes to that. Um, how is how is that how is that balanced out so that so that there isn't a race to become to to become more powerful in that regard? Yeah, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. It's difficult because also the monk, when he chooses a temptation, he also uh, needs to consider that if he ha if he fails, he will make that demon more powerful. Mm -hmm. So sometimes he won't choose a temptation considering his virtues, but he will choose it considering the power of that particular demon. Yeah, I can, I can, I can see, I can, <laughs> I can see, I can see that. Um, now, with, now, with all, with all that in mind, um, as, as... Yeah, it really requires uh, quite a lot of uh, mental effort, uh, it's like you can play it in, in two in two ways. You can either play like very relaxed, not not struggling to remember the numbers and not making sudden a stressful situation of all of it, mm -hmm. and just go with the flow. And you may win playing like that, or you can really try to play competitively and uh, really struggle to make all the mathematical theories about what each is uh, each uh, monk's particular uh, strongest virtue and all that and you will likely get more chances but it's uh, quite difficult to remember mm -hmm. now with the, with that in with that in mind um now i'm not i'm not asking you to do th to do this but have have there has there been um thought to to alternate rule sets since that's one of those things that you see infrequently in um standalone card games mm -hmm. uh, some like adjustments to the rules yeah yes uh, the, i think that the only adjustment the late latest adjustment adjustment we did was reducing uh, from 21 to 20 the amount of uh, points you get to distribute among your virtues when you do the character creation of the monk But that's basically it. And when it comes when it comes to when it when it comes to the when it comes to that when it comes to this particular setup. Um, now I do want I do want to offer my congratulations on on you managing to get managing to um, get significantly over your initial goal with pl with plenty of time with plenty of time to spare. Since at the time of this recording, you're at um, twenty-seven thousand and change of over a goal, and your goal was um, fifteen hundred. Yeah, um, thank you very much, uh, Mildred. Yeah. Now the Kickstarter and the Kickstarter ends on the 29th. What would you be shooting for as far as a release window? A release window. Um, I think that in. Yeah, two or three months' time, uh, backers sh should get the the deck in their hands. I'm pretty sure. I'm trying to make it up uh, for the last project, Warbland, that I got very delayed, but it was a very huge project for me, and it involved a very big team. So I'm trying to not fall on the same errors and starting with time this uh, this part on this particular occasion. So I'm doing things with time. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and I'll I'll certainly be I'll certainly be keeping an eye out eye out on it. I know the I know these things are gonna, are going to be in flux, especially get especially given um, current events regarding regarding get regarding getting stuff out there. Um, and while while the while the main pledge is going to be for a for a um 
a physical deck. Um, has mm -hmm. has there been has there been consideration of doing a print and play version? There has not. Uh, at the moment, uh, I have not considered that, mm -hmm. but I might do it in the future. Haven't yeah. think about it. At the moment, I will distribute uh, it through Drive Through RPG. Mm -hmm. Uh, next week, I will present some stretch goals. One of them will be for sure uh, a, a physical poster of the game that will be ex exclusive for the backers. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the game is basically all already designed, so uh, there is uh, not much work involved regarding the aesthetics or the production of the game itself. And with and um, I'll like I said I'll be I'll be keeping an eye out and looking forward to how how this plays out because well given that given that it's all about monks I feel I feel like I'm obliged. <laughs> of course, of course, I will send you a complimentary deck for you to try it. All right. And I think that yes, I I really need to do a ASAP a a, a playthrough. Of the of the game to show it off. Yeah, uh, I think that people will be surprised about how uh, fun and uh, enjoyable it is. Mm -hmm. uh, as a, um, as the, I think that I, I don't remember any mechanics similar to this game, and uh, it presents a, a quite dynamic uh, uh, playing session. Oh yeah. And uh, and uh, once once that particular thing is up, just just let me know, and I'll I'll pro I'll share I'll share it around. But with all of, with all of that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come on to the, come on to the show and enjoy the madness at play here in the temple. No, no, thank you, thank you, Midra. It's always a pleasure for me mm -hmm. for the opportunity to present uh, my projects. Mm -hmm. uh, I will as soon as I. Uh, as this project is finished and all uh, pledges are delivered, uh, I will present a, an RPG project called Hell Knight, and that is going to be like a blast. It's going to be totally original, different setting. And, mm -hmm. Well, my playgroups are all very excited about it. I'll, cer I'll certainly be looking forward to, to that. Um, but... W but... And of and of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!